Happy Sunday, my precious friends. I hope you are good, feel blessed, and live in the joy of the Lord. Uh, lately, I've been thinking about how God is drawing his people to himself out of love. And I was reminded by the Holy Spirit how God was drawing me back to him. That's what he do. He draws us. He can't force us, but he draw, draws us. He draws our hearts towards him. The Greek word for dragging somebody is, is to pull by force, actually. It doesn't mean that God forces us, but he works in our will to want to do his perfect will, the Bible says. Because we need to, to come by ourselves. We, we need to want to be drawn by him. Um, so that's what happened when I returned back to Jesus Christ. I had se several years as a backslidden. I love Jesus in my heart, but I was too, I had too much fear of God to call myself a Christian. So I didn't want to be a hypocrite uh, because I didn't have a Christian lifestyle for 10 years. So I called myself a backslidden actually. But inside my heart, this longing started to pull me towards God several years be before I gave my life again. It was something, it was the Holy Spirit. He pulled me, he drew me closer to God. So he created a hunger inside of me to get back to God. I knew somehow, uh, even if I wasn't ready at that time, I knew that I need to go back. One day I need to go back to, to what I, I used to have. But I was not ready to give away the lifestyle that I have. I was not ready to let go and surrender completely. Because my fear of God was so deep actually that I knew that if I'm coming back, I will come back 100%. I'll do it 100%. I'm not going to live a mediocre Christian life. I'm not going to live a half-hearted Christian life. I'm going to go all the way. And it was a struggle also from the enemy to not make me give my 100% devotion to God. But still God was drawing me through the Holy Spirit for many years closer and closer to him. And I could go into churches the last two years there. I remember I wanted to go to church with some of my Christian friends and and I was quite hungry actually. Something in me wanted to give my life, but I couldn't manage to do it. So it was a, a demonic struggle and also maybe something in my flesh that I was not ready when I was uh, asked if I wanted to receive Jesus again. I said no to the preachers and I almost run out of the churches feeling so disappointed at myself that I couldn't give my life to Jesus. So this struggle was on and off for two years. And I remember the last uh, months before I, I actually did it, I believe it was an angel or maybe two angels uh, Came, came down the street, I was standing looking at something in a window, a shop in Stockholm. And all of a sudden this person, I think it was a man, he just passed me and he said, Jesus is waiting for you. And I like turn and I like, who are you? I mean, you don't know me. I don't know you. It was so weird. And it just, you know, gave me this sting right here in my heart. I knew it was God. The week after another place I was, totally different area, a woman came up to me and, and, and when she passed me on the street, she, she said something similar. 
Jesus is longing for you, she said. And I believe it was angels. It could be angels. So that was also something God used to draw me to him. Uh, and I had a quite bad uh, relationship at that time. I just want to testify a little bit here. Uh, I was struggling in my relationship. It was terrible. I wanted out of that relationship. My whole life was like dark. Because I was not living as I should. I knew I had a calling. I was so far away from it as possible. I was living in sin in many levels. And I was trapped in my sin. I was trapped in my environment. So I was desperate. And sometimes God allows us to come to that desperate place. Where he's waiting until we're so desperate that you are shouting to God, save me. Because it needs to come from yourself. You need to want to come to him and be drawn to him. You need to want to be drawn. So I went to this Christian meeting. Uh, and I had my ex-boyfriend with me at that time. And I remember, oh my God, it was so... Um, destructive relationship and we were almost arguing in the church service we were sitting at the back there and I couldn't stand being in that environment because it was so anointed there so I ran out of the building I ran into the woods start screaming it was this demonic battle over my life and I was screaming under a tree all by myself and this old man came out, he was like the, the usher or something, he came out with snow to his knees and said to me, came back, come back here, he said, he didn't know my name, come back here, you can't stand there and scream. And I was like, I'm not going back to that church, I don't want to go in there. No, you don't have to go in there, you can just sit in the hallway with me, he said. Oh, do you promise? Yes, I promise. So I went into the hallway with him. And this was my first supernatural experience, I think. Physically that I felt the presence of God. So I was sitting in the hallway and I was so uh, ice cold on the inside because I was so hurt and, and blocked in many ways, you know. So this old man were sitting next to me there in the hallway and, and we didn't speak to each other. And, and all of a sudden I felt this wind that came into the room and it felt like a physical wind. And I said to the, the usher, could you please close the doors or the windows because it's blowing in here. And he said, there is no window open. And the moment he said that, that wind went into my body. It's the only way I can explain it. It went into my blood system and I was so scared. I stood up and the chair fell to the floor and I felt it was rushing through my blood. Something was rushing through my blood. Something was coming out and something was getting in. And I said to the man, what is going on with me? What, what is this? It's something in my system. And I didn't know that he told me later that he was sitting there praying silent for me. Maybe it was a demon coming out of me. Uh, but I know for sure that it was the Holy Spirit that came into my life that moment. Because I fell to the floor, I started weeping, and he came and he asked me if I wanted to be saved, and I said yes, and then I received Jesus as my savior again. Um, so that was a draw from God. Another time, for not so long ago, I was praying for a friend of mine uh, who was struggling with fear, and I saw this vision inside of me that I was, that he fell through the, the ice under the water and he just let himself drown under the water in the vision. 
and he could easily have just swim out of that water and saved himself. But he didn't do it. He just let himself drown. And I jumped into the water and I started to shout into the water. You have to get up. And I took him and I dragged him out of the water with my physical hands. And when I managed to get him up of the ice, I heard God said to me, don't ever do that again. And I didn't understand. And God, I'm just rescuing my friend. And God said, you are not the Holy Spirit. This person needs to himself or herself want to be drawn up by me. You cannot do it in your own flesh. He needs to, to want to come up of that fear or whatever that, was, that person was struggling with. So I learned something. Uh, I want to... So we are drawn by the Holy Spirit. And that is love. It's love that are drawing us to God. So when, when God is drawing us, he's using some... Uh, tools. He's using the scriptures. He's using that we hear the scriptures and we understand what we hear and we get faith. And that is also tools he's using to open our hearts. Or he could use the Holy Spirit. Like uh, uh, comes from the inside of us that is drawing us to Jesus because that's one of the jobs the Holy Spirit has is to point at Jesus, is to enlighten the word for us, and is to encourage us to seek Jesus Christ. So um, in one way, the drawing that God has over our lives is irresistible. It can look like we have our own will in one way we have, but when the drawing starts over your life, when God has decided, I'm going to rescue this person i will draw him and her to myself it's a process where he's drawing you maybe for years and then it becomes irresistible you can't stand against it like i was trying to in that church service where i was running out it was irresistible so even if i was shouting and outside that building when i came in the holy spirit came gently like a breeze like a wind that just came over my body to help me to give my life to Jesus Christ. Isn't that beautiful? So the spirit uh, moves upon us to turn from being unwilling and to be willing to surrender. That's what it's all about is to surrender. So God has a drawing power and I'm going to give you some scriptures today about it because when he starts to draw us to himself or into his plan, he always ends in triumph. What he starts, he finish. We simply cannot resist it. So I'm going to read us some scriptures now. Um, let's see. In Jeremiah 31, God says, The Lord appeared to us in the past, saying, I have loved you with an everlasting love. I have drawn you with unfailing kindness. He's not pushing you into his arms. He's drawing you. To be drawn is like is something, is a love, but it's also a father's touch. Unfailing kindness. So even if you are stumbling out there, you're not quite right with God in some areas of your life. It's areas where you haven't given to God. Maybe it's fear or other stuff, uh, addictions. He has an everlasting love. Everlasting love for you all the time. He loved me when I was fooling around in the world. He loved me the same as he's loving me now. Isn't that fantastic? Uh, in, um, let's see, John 12, 
30, it says, and when I draw the hearts of people to gather them to me. There we go again. He draws our hearts to gather us to him. In Psalms 40, I want to read that too. Second uh, verse, it says, he stopped down to lift me out of a danger from the desolate pit I was in. Out of the muddy mess I had fallen into, now he's lifted me up into a firm, secure place. He lifts us up. He draws us up. He draws us near to him. He's lifted me up into a firm, secure place and steadied me while I walk along his ascending path. A new song for a new day rises up in me every time I think about how he breaks through for me, David said. God is fighting for you, you know. Heaven is fighting for you. When you're struggling with areas of your life, it's hard to surrender, maybe even to get saved. If you're here, you don't know Jesus. Well, you know about him, but you, you haven't surrendered. Heaven is, is working for you right now. Heaven is having conversations about you right now. And, and angels are assigned to you right now to help you, to draw you to Jesus. Because he is there having an everlasting love for you. And he's drawing you through the Holy Spirit back to him. To the place that you are called to live in. In his arms. On his path. And be used by, by him with all the gifts that he has inside of you. Maybe you don't know. Maybe you don't see all the gifts that's there. Everything is already there. It's put in you already. But when the light of God comes over your life, you will see what you have been given by God. And he will activate your gifts and use you. Um, I will read another Psalm 18. I love that Psalm. 16 verse. It says, I reached down from on high and took hold of me. He reached down, sorry. He drew me out of deep waters he drew me when i didn't manage to get out of something myself he drew me so we needed help in some way we were lost we needed help to be drawn out of that struggle at that water that pit that prison he draws us out and he draws us out by using also our hearts. So we are willing to be drawn to him. We are willing to open our hearts and say, Jesus, here I am. I can't take it anymore. I'm, I'm going to surrender now. Help me to get out of this prison. Help me to come out of this fear. I can't do it by myself. I need your help. And then the Holy Spirit will drag you out of that thing. It's love. My precious friends, that drawing from God, from heaven, is love. is pure love. I'll show it to you. I'm just going to finish this. He rescued me from my powerful enemy, from my foes who were too strong for me. They confronted me in the day of my disaster, but the Lord was so my support. He brought me out into a spacious place. He rescued me because he is... He delighted in me. So God doesn't bring you out into a tight place. He brings you to a spacious place. Freedom. Where you can live in freedom. Where you can run. Where you can jump. Roll around <laughs> in his presence. Freedom. In so Songs of Solomon. When uh, uh, Shulamit. And, and Solomon are having this love conversation, which is a picture of the bride and the bridegroom, that's Jesus and us. She says to her king, draw me into your heart. In the first chapter, verse 4, draw me into your heart. She asked to be drawn by the king. 
and he's drawing her. You can't draw yourself, you know. You need to ask him to draw you and to be open in your heart for him to touch you. In, um, I have some scriptures today. First John 4. Don't you love the word of God? That's my, my light. That's my foundation. I can't do anything in this life unless I have the scriptures of God. So uh, that's why I'm pumping you with words because it's so important to have the word of God, the scriptures as your foundation. We live out of the word of God. I'm telling you, I had for many, many years ago when I was in my 30s, the Holy Spirit came over me with such a spirit of revelation for the word of God that I practically, I'm not um, exaggerating now, I was studying the scriptures like five, six hours every day for five, six years. True story. My family almost got crazy on me. I was, I was sitting when I had the day off. I didn't even get out of my pages. I was up early in the morning, putting on the alarm clock, five, six in the morning. I was so longing for opening my Bible every morning because I understood everything that said, was writing, was, um, was in the scriptures. I understood it. And I was crying in the Bible. I had different translations on the floor. And I was just digging deep in the scriptures for five, six years. The only thing I did was to fill myself, fill myself for hours, sometimes the whole day. I was just writing, reading the, the word of God. I mean, sorry. And, and, and in that scripture and, and understood it. And I had such an appetite on the word of God. I couldn't stop. And I know it was an anointing on me. To fill sort of my hard disk in my spirit. Um, so it's good to, to start reading your Bible, your whole Bible, and study the Word of God so you know. It's one of the tools, as I said in the beginning, that God uses to draw us closer to Him. To make us understand, because faith comes by hearing. If you don't hear the Word of God... You, you, you have a weak faith. You don't know. You don't know how to, to operate in this life spiritually. You don't know what you have. You don't know who you are, your worth. You don't know how the Father looks at you, that Jesus looks at you. You don't know how the Holy Spirit is operating. You don't know about protection or the promises of God if you don't dig into the Word of God. It's the Word that is building us up. And making us powerful men and women of Christ. Yeah, this scripture I want to read now. 1 John 4, verse 18. Love never brings fear, for fear is always related to punishment. Remember that. If you have fear, you are thinking about being punished for something. And somebody said to me, 99% of all the things we are scared of never happen because fear is connected to the spirits of lie. So when you are fe fearful and fearing stuff, most of the time is a lie. Most of the time it never happened. It's a spirit of fear. There are binding people in the body of Christ. I see it all the time. And we are not called to live by fear. We're called to live in his love. But love's perfection drives out fear. There you go. He, he drives it out of you. He draws us out of stuff and he drives out his it drives out your fear with his love. Because fear, uh, fear of punishment far from our hearts. He drives it out far from our hearts. Whoever walks constantly afraid of punishment has not reached love's perfection. So if you are living in fear as a Christian, 
you haven't seen yourself, you haven't mirrored your life in the word of God, so you know who you are. Because when you know, when the word comes deep in you and you have that intimacy with Christ, you don't have fear. Today, I can honestly say, I used to have fear back in the days and God, he took it out of me. In one second, I was free from fear. And I know there is a fear that is sort of protecting us. I don't call it fear. I call it to be careful when you feel a sort of an instinct to not go certain places like God is, teach, is warning you to not go there, but not driven by fear. We should not be driven by fear. The enemy is the father of fear. He is the one that has most fear of all. He knows that his time is coming. He knows his, he, where he's going to end in hell. He fears that. So he is pouring out his fear all over this planet and binding people in fear. Imprison them in fear. You see, if you have fear in one area of your life and you don't get free from that fear for a long time, that fear will start to come other places in your life. Suddenly you're afraid of other stuff, of being social, you're afraid of certain groups in the society, you're afraid of going out in the streets at night, you're afraid of taking elevator or airplane, you're afraid of eating certain food, that you can get sick, you're afraid of dying, of living, and then the enemy has managed to bind you completely with fear and trap you into this prison of fear that is terrible. Only people that are struggling with fear know what I'm talking about here. But you can be free instantly. Instantly you can be free from fear. That happened to me. So uh, I'm just going to invite you to take a step with God out of your place of fear today and see yourself as a fearless person you are fearless in jesus christ you're not called to live in fear one more scripture my precious friends no i read it in the beginning so um God is drawing you. He's drawing us. Such a love. Wow. Such an amazing love. He never gives up on us. He's faithful when we are unfaithful. He's faithful. He wants to go and look for all his kids. If they have moved away from the path. He says he's the good shepherd. Leaves the 99 to go and look for the one sheep. He's such a good father and is using the tools of love to draw us back to him, to draw us out of the pit, out of the prison, to drive us out of fear. He uses perfect love. Isn't that great? So I just want to inspire you with these words that when you open your heart, when you manage to open your heart, that's all you need to do. To say, God, I'm bound. I don't know how to get free of all these addictions or struggling with fear or other stuff in my life. But I, I'm willing to open my heart and then he will do the rest for you. He will draw out everything inside of you. Just say yes. Just say, I'm willing to be free today. I'm ready to let go. I'm ready to surrender to your will. I don't know how to do it. You need to help me. When David was shouting from the pit, he was shouting to God, help me. And God took his hand deep down under the water and dragged him out. He will drag you out. He will drive out that fear from your life today, my precious friend. Because he loves you. Sorry, I lost that. So... That was my word. Have an awesome Sunday afternoon. 
I hope you have a good church to enter today and uh, be with people that are anointed and that are passionate for Christ. Find your tribe, find people that are filled with fire on the inside, that are going somewhere in their Christian lives. Find friends like that. Have a blessed day. I love you guys. I speak to you soon. Bye bye.